What's going on my friends? How are you doing? Today, I'm going to be learning a little bit more about Ireland because quite truthfully, I know very little to absolutely nothing other than Cork, one of its major cities, is actually becoming the second Silicon Valley in the European continent. So to learn more about Ireland, I'm going to be checking out a video from our friends over at Geography Now, which do a phenomenal job breaking down each country and making it as simple as possible. If you guys would like to talk a little bit further, you could always find me on Instagram and it's always nice getting to connect with you there. But otherwise, let's dive right into the video. Ah, the Emerald Isle, Europe's rain shield, the McNugget. Ireland is loaded with so many notable spots and regions. <laughs> and there's a town called Dingle. <laughs> First of all, Ireland is the third largest island in Europe, located in the North Atlantic Ocean, separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Eh, did you notice how I deliberately avoided British Isles? Uh, yeah, good call. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Ireland's subdivisions. Let's just get it over with quick and fast. So, when discussing the independent sovereign state, most people are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which makes up these five six of the island, and and unless mentioned otherwise, this is the Ireland we'll be mostly discussing in this episode. To this day, the last fifth northern part of Ireland here is actually part of the UK, and it doesn't even quite know exactly what to label itself. Some call it a province, some say it's a region, some say it's a constituent country, but the point is, the UK... Ah, is a country, which, as you can that explains the confusion. In the past, with the Irish. It's weird, though, because the people here can choose their own citizenship, be it British, Irish, or both. On the west side, the North Ireland border just juts into the farmland. It must be nice. A small village called Manger, and provides a seven kilometer wide quarter to the town of Bundoran for the rest of the Republic to enter into Donegal County. And then you have the strange Penny Enclave right across the Finn River with only a tenth of a kilometer wide entrance that Ireland grabbed and is still part of Monaghan County. This in return gave a small exclave to the UK. An unnamed patch of land with only three small farming homes. No freaking way dude. Swimming across the river would be by taking the most name switched international road on the island the Irish N54 which turns into the A3 highway once you cross into Northern Ireland. Then it switches back into the N54 once you cross into the exclave and it reverts back to the A3 again for about two kilometers and then back to the N54 once you cross back into the Republic of Ireland. So literally it's like Irish, British, Irish, British, Irish. Or as I like to call it, my dating life. <laughs> That's quite the battle there. So the wow. Like, eh, instead of following the Foyle River all the way up to Foyle Lock, why don't we just swerve left through the farmland to take the entire city of Derry? Because, hey, logic! Basically, to an Irish person, the entire island of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, is just Ireland. So, if you consider the administrative divisions, the Republic of Ireland is divided into 26 counties. However, many also include the extra six from Northern Ireland and call it 32. But then there's the two city and county councils, Limerick and Waterford, and the three city councils, Dublin, Galway, and Cork, making 31 local authorities in the Republic of Ireland and technically 37 again if you include Northern Ireland's counties and the capital of Dublin. God right. damn. Yeah, good Ooh. job. I got that right. Woo. Historically though, Ireland was also kind of split into four provinces that many people still refer to today. They are Connacht, Leinster, Munster and Ulster. Northern Ireland is often referred to as Ulster as it encompasses most of the counties that make up the historical province. Otherwise, the largest cities after Dublin are Cork and Limerick with the largest airports being Dublin, Cork and Shannon airports. Keep in mind, if Northern Ireland was included in this, Belfast would take the number two spots on each of those lists. In addition to being an island itself, Ireland also hosts hundreds of smaller little islands and islets. The most populated ones being Great Island by Cork, Ackle Island in Mayo, and Grumna and the Iron Islands in Galway. Finally, some places of interest across Ireland might include places like Trinity College, the Guinness Storehouse, the Neolithic Tomb of Newgrange, which is older than the Pyramids of Giza, the Rock of Cashel, Glendalock and Wicklow, the Blarney Stone of Cork, that island that was filmed at the, the end of Star Wars is called Skellig Michael, Tory Island, which kind of has like its own king, Scotia's Grave, where an Egyptian princess is buried supposedly. I didn't know about that one. You didn't even know that. Wow. <laughs> I just found it off of Atlas Obscura. The Mound of Hostages. The Cata Fields. The Sky Garden. Hookhead Lighthouse. The oldest continuously used lighthouse still operating in Europe. So you live right next to it. Yeah. Sean's Bar. The oldest surviving pub and possibly the entire world. And of course way too many. Churches, abbeys, castles, dolmens, tombs, everything else to list. Do wait. Let's digest a little by little so we don't get too far ahead. I had no idea, first of all, that you could choose your citizenship because that sounds like a dream. But in short, I could definitely see the insane amount of confusion when it comes to the territories and why there's so much of like a bickering back and forth when it comes to, you know, being associated with Britain and stuff. So I appreciate the explanation, Barbie. Ireland is very green. The end. 
Uh, all right, so there's a little bit more. I thought he was serious for a second there. <laughs> glacial carved mineral and sandstone island with about 12 small mountain ranges, the majority of which are located in the north, west, and south. You'll notice looking at the map that the east coast of Ireland seems to be relatively smooth and straight, whereas the west coast of Ireland seems to be all choppy and serrated with inlets and peninsulas. Almost like if you took a ball of clay and just spread it across a flat surface in one direction. <laughs> one direction. <laughs> anyway, the tallest peak is Mount Carntool at about 1,000 meters. And the longest and most important river being the River Shannon, and a large lake on the entire island being Loch Ney in Northern Ireland. However, if we're talking about the Republic of Ireland, the largest would be Loch Corrib in West Galway. The west side is also home to the most notable natural landmark, the Cliffs of Moher that rise about 120 meters straight up from the That ocean. is so Otherwise, beautiful. You have the Sleeve Cliff a bit further up north, and in the UK's Northern Ireland, you, still, you have the Giant's Causeway, a series of hexagonal volcanic plug steps that just jut into the ocean side. I love how you say that. Was that man-made? Hexagonal. <laughs> hexagonal, hexagonal. That looks really nice. Now, despite being located fairly north in latitude, Ireland actually experiences a strange weather phenomena in which it actually kind of acts like a rain shield for the UK. It takes all the warm air released by the North Atlantic Gulf Stream that starts all the way from the Caribbean. This means that although Ireland is on the same relative latitude as Newfoundland, Canada, they remain about 9 degrees Celsius or about 17 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, rarely reaching the freezing point, which in return means they hardly ever get snow. However, that again in return means Ireland gets a ton of rain. Like seriously, over half the year is drenched. You only get like two months of sunshine and then it's back to the top. Ouch. I mean, wouldn't that make you guys like kind of depressed? What do you think drinking is? Speaking of which, the abundance of rain allows Ireland to actually flourish in flora and agriculture, giving it its trademark green colour. Common crops being spuds, sugar beets, and grains like barley, oats, and wheat, which, as you can imagine, has a large portion that goes towards Ireland's most famous product, beer. Beer! Ireland without beer is like Mexico without tacos, Koreans without kimchi, Argentinians without salsa, Bob Saget without his telekinetic laser. You get the point, Barbie. Yeah, beer culture is such an integral part of being Irish that even priests and nuns get in on the action and share a pint of Guinness. Which, by the way, the Bible never condemns alcohol, just drunkenness, so... Interesting enough. Yeah, Did not know that. <laughs> Otherwise, some top notable Irish dishes might include things like... Box tea. Potato bread. Brown soda bread. Bacon and cabbage. Too many suits to list, like coddle and Irish stew, black pudding, oysters, and Guinness. And overall, you can find potatoes cooked in various ways with, like, everything. Uh, I'll addition, pass on the oysters, the but I'm definitely hungry already. Just... Mammals like the red fox. European hedgehog. The stoat. Pygmy shrew. And badger. And the that one land so reptile cute. that is native to the country, the viviparous lizard. Speaking of which, no, the story of St. Patrick driving all the snakes out of Ireland was probably not true. Ireland most likely never had snakes due to its geographic isolation from the rest of Europe. And also St. Patrick probably wasn't Irish, he was Welsh. Yeah, lots of misconceptions when it comes to Irish people. Which brings us to... No snakes in Ireland. I don't like snakes in the slightest. That is a massive plus for me. Like, seriously, like, I would actually consider, like, going hiking or kayaking or whatever, whatever is possible to do outdoors, knowing that there isn't any snakes. I'm assuming there's probably some sort of bears and other very dangerous wildlife. However, snakes, don't have to worry about that one. Hey, so Potter, I... <laughs> Uh, sorry, patter. So what does it mean to be Irish? Oh, we're all about the crack in Ireland, so we are. Yeah, crack, what, crack, crack? Crack every day and night of the week. We love the cracks over here. DEA, freeze, that's where I can see them. Oh, common misconception. See, we're not actually talking about drugs, we're talking about- Resisting arrest! We're not- uh, No! <laughs> First of all, Ireland has about. I mean, it sounds oddly old. familiar. <laughs> Northern Ireland and has the highest birth rate in the EU. About 83% of the country identifies as ethnically Irish, whereas about 9.5% are white of other nationalities. Whereas the remainder of the country is other groups like Asians, Blacks, and who knows, probably some magical wizards or something. So the country uses the euro as their currency. They also use the Type G plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, thanks to modern media, everyone probably has at least a little bit of exposure to the stereotypical Irish culture, one way or another. You know, like river dance or leprechauns or yeah. river dancing leprechauns, but there's an entire world to the deep... Definitely leprechauns, Irish that's identity. for sure. First of all, the language. Technically, Ireland, or at least the Republic of Ireland, is a bilingual country that uses both Irish and English, although English is used far more often than Irish ever is. The Irish language is related to other Celtic-based languages spoken in Scotland, Wales, and to some extent, Brittany in France. Just when you thought you were safe after the Iceland episode, Irish comes along and suddenly M and H make a V sound, yeah. D and H make a G or Y yeah. sound, B, H, and F sometimes make like a W sound. Sound. All right, Paul, let's say you take a shot at saying these words. All right. R I I G L A T. Nope. R I G L A T. It means go on. Tav talk. Uh, nice try. It's talk duck. It means important. Letras. No. Letters. It means toilet. Fail nacht. Actually, that was just one I made up. <laughs> I would give it a shot, but 
If Barbie is doing bad, I don't even want to know how I would do pronouncing any of those. Thousands of years ago, the Celts roamed all across continental Europe. However, the rise of empires and warring people groups kind of pushed them all the way west into the Isles. And the Celts had an incredibly complex system of tribes or clans and families that dominated certain regions with their own chiefs and kings. This is partially why so many people in Ireland have mech or the, the almost exclusively Irish use O prefix, prefixes in their last names, which translates oh. to son or descendant. Prior to Christianity, Celts were primarily farmers and cattle herders with pagan and drew roots with some controversial practices recorded by the Romans. That's mind blowing. They came in and then Catholicism played a huge role even to this day. However, certain ancient traditions still lived on, like the festival of Salvin. Sound. So really? What? I thought M and H make a V sound. Nah, it depends. Stop by your head, Barbie. <laughs> Your language. Sound later became known as Halloween, which became popularized and is celebrated all across the world today. However, originally they used to use turnip lanterns, not pumpkins. Folklore and tradition is strong. We've all heard of leprechauns, but there's also Fionn McCool and the Fianna of the Fenian cycle, Cucullin the Hound, Deerbill and Grania, similar to the Princess Isolde and Tristan in Arthurian legend, and so much more. And the two most popular sports, which are almost never played anywhere else in the world, Gaelic football and hurling. Oh yeah, that's like a Irish uh, Quidditch or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't call it Quidditch. Oh yeah, this is a hurl. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. How do you play with that? Why don't we ask Jason State? The fact that he brought one is determination. Speaking of which, there is no universal Irish accent. You get different uh. dialects from different regions. For example, Moses oh, Tassler thinks he's great. Now he's on YouTube. I'll wrap this hole round his neck. Big fat head on him. Well, I came home on a Monday night. As drunk as drunk could be. I don't know who you are or where you are. And I will find you. I return this wall. Is Liam Neeson actually Irish? The entire country gotten stabbed within hours of upload if I cool. that. <laughs> Otherwise, we could go on and on about the rich, complex layers of music, dance, literature, symbolism, artifacts, traditions, festivals, clothing, customs, and legends, but that would take way too long. And if you want to know more, just watch any episode of Fair City or Father Ted. Or you could just like talk to an Irish person as well. I don't come across that many Irish people though. So hands down, probably one of the most interesting things I learned about this episode was probably about the last names with the O being in regards to the descendants and then the Mick being in regards to being the son of something. So also I thought it was really cool because I didn't know that Ireland had its own version of like Halloween called Saum. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And from what I saw of the simple pictures there, it's it, I definitely see the correlation there. So that was pretty cool. And I guess since I already tried to pronounce a word, I might as well try to pronounce the words that my friend Barbie was trying to uh, get at as well. Arik Arhaig, Arhaig, oh boy. Arhaiglat. Arhaigliat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was wrong. Tabhachta. Talk duck, it means important. Laitris. Laitris. Lehurs, it means toilet. Bafail neacht. How do you actually say that? Actually, that was just one I made of. I feel like an idiot now. Well, hopefully I'm not the only one that learned something new throughout this video. So if you learned something new, please go right ahead and share it down in the comment sections. It will make me feel a little bit better about the lack of knowledge that I have about the Irish. Like I mentioned earlier throughout the video, it is very rare for me to come across an Irish person, let alone Irish goods. So if you're interested, you don't have to, but if you would like to, I'm going to be putting my P.O. box down below in the description box if you would be interested in maybe sending over some sort of like snacks or candies where I can make a whole video out of it. And of course, I would give you a tremendous shout out for being as amazing and awesome as you truly are. Don't forget, we can always talk a little bit further on my Instagram and you could keep up to date with some of the things that I do throughout my week. Here on screen, you should be seeing two videos that you could always check out because, you know, you're already on YouTube. Might as well click on one of these two. Hello? Come on. Like you got better plans today. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around this far. I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.